Good morning, everybody. How about that view you're looking at here in remote San Simeon, California, site of Hearst Castle. You're looking at the front yard view of Mr. William Randolph Hearst, a media mogul from the 20th century, who would come out here to San Simeon and wake up every morning to a view of the Pacific Ocean and of San Simeon Harbor. Talk about maritime momentum. Good morning, everybody. On behalf of California State Parks, I wanna welcome you here to Hearst Castle in beautiful San Simeon, California. Hearst Castle is one of your 279 California State Parks. We wanna welcome you to another edition of Home Learning Programs, Sports Parks PE. Our view today from the Pacific Ocean gives us our theme today, maritime momentum. My name is Laura, I'm a guide here at Hearst Castle. We have a special guest here today with you. First of all, our videographer, Richard, he's standing behind the camera. And secondly, another guide, Janelle, who's gonna help co-participate and demonstrate some of our exercises today. Now, before we get started here at this beautiful estate of William Randolph Hearst, a very wealthy man from the 20th century, comparable to today's Mark Zuckerberg or Rupert Murdoch of Fox News, we need to talk a little bit about health and safety considerations. Because after all, our number one priority here, especially at Parks PE and California State Parks, is your health and your safety. Now, we are still in the middle of the epidemic, known as COVID-19. However, we don't have to wear masks according to State of California guidelines. And we're outdoors anyway. That's an exception. When we're exercising, we don't need to wear those masks. We do, however, need to worry about water and hydration because we are exercising out here today, we wanna to go ahead and grab ourselves a water bottle, your own personal hydration station, if you will. So you'll see Janelle and myself sipping from our water bottles today as need be. And why is that the case? Well, we're gonna be doing somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 10 different exercises today, anywhere from five to 15 repetitions of each of those exercises. Your heart rate's gonna elevate, your respiration rate is also going to elevate. So you wanna make sure to literally take a breather, Sit down if you need to, take a sip of a hydration station, and then join us for our other exercises today. Any good exercise or physical education program has at its beginning a warm up and at the end a cool down. So we're going to start today, Janelle, with a little bit of a warm up. And we'd like to have you focus, have our videographer rather, focus in on some beautiful flowers here today at the side of one of the cottages that William Randolph Hearst had his architect Julia Morgan build. And this was finished in about 1923, almost 100 years ago. You are looking at Casa del Mar and in the front of the back of the house here, you're looking at what are called camellias. And camellias are a special flower. Mr. Hearst loved them very much. And they are, happen to be peppered throughout the 20 to 25 acres of gardens here up at the estate. Now, that being said, those camellias also serve as the basis of our first exercise and warm up. Janelle and I are going to go ahead and show you what we're going to be doing here today. You'll notice that we have mats laying down here on the what's called the esplanade, a 400 meter sidewalk that frames the entire grounds. And what Janelle and I are going to do is we're going to get on the ground just like a caterpillar. Camellia caterpillar crawlers is what we call these. This is going to get your heart rate up. It's going to get your muscles working. It's going to get your respiration rate up. So you want to go ahead, find yourself a mat or some soft ground if you're outside like we are. We're going to go ahead and maintain an athletic stance for almost all of our exercises today, whether they're on the ground or standing up. So what does that mean? You want to get yourself into a hip width stance or a shoulder width stance. You want to put the weight in the heels, bring your shoulders up and back and then drop your shoulder blades down into an imaginary back pocket or a back pocket if you have one like I do. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're going to hinge at the hip just like so. So about a 45 to 90 degree angle, put some bend in the knees if you need to, and then we're gonna squat back, sitting back. We don't wanna squat forward or that hurts our knees. So we squat back into our posterior and we're gonna put the hands out in front of us with palms facing each other. And like a caterpillar, we're gonna take those hands and crawl right on out, just like so, to the end of our mat. We're gonna hold what's called a plank, 
ensuring that our wrists, elbows, and shoulders are all in alignment with each other. We hold that for about two seconds, then we crawl back in nice and easy, like a caterpillar, and then we bring our arms up. Because caterpillars eventually will become butterflies, we'll go ahead and spread those butterfly wings. So again, hands to the side, into the hip, squat back, arms in front, palms facing each other, and walk it on out. Nice and easy, the camellia caterpillar crawl. And we're going to go ahead and come on back in. Now, some of us might have an issue with that deep expression. So a gentler expression of the camellia caterpillar uh, crawler would be just simply the hip hinge. Janelle is going to go ahead and show you the gentler expression. So just hip hinge, or if you want, you can also hip hinge and squat. Come back up. Hip hinge and squat. Or if you just want to do the hip hinge, that's fine too. Either way, that's a nice gentle expression. If you have not such bad shoulder issues, you're going to join me and hip hinge, squat, arms out in front, and then crawl it on out. We're going to do about 10 of these. So follow along with Janelle if you want a gentler expression. Follow along with me if you want the deeper expression. Okay? So again, caterpillar crawlers, that was one. We're going to come out here for two. Hold that plank for about two seconds. Come on back in. Butterfly wings at the top. There we go. And I like what Janelle is doing. She's doing a little modification of the gentler expression. She's got her butterfly wings at the top, the end of her hip hinge, and her squat. All right, we've got number four right here. If I lose count, I apologize. Sometimes I get distracted as I'm talking. And again, remember to breathe. As you come out to that exertion, exhale. And then we inhale up. Exhale down. Here we go. Inhale up. You need to take a couple of breaths. How's that feeling for you, Janelle? Pretty good. All right, getting that heart rate up. You got about three more left. Here we go. Hinge, squat, back on out. Here we go. Oh yeah, I'm feeling that heart rate getting warmed up nicely on this beautiful late winter day in San Simeon, California. Bring it on up. One final time. Hinge, squat. And down we go with that plank, back up. Butterfly wing to the top. All right. So if you need to, grab a little water, take a breather, sit down if you need to. We talked about the caterpillars on those camellias. We had butterfly wings at the top, if you recall. Caterpillars, how many of you know what happens to caterpillars when they grow up? Raise your hand if you know what happens to caterpillars when they grow up. That's right, they become butterflies. And those camellias where the caterpillars crawl, when they become butterflies, they'll hang out with those camellias and pollinate them. So the crawling caterpillar becomes the caterpillar that was once the camellia caterpillar into the camellia butterfly. So I want you to think like a butterfly now. That athletic stance we talked about earlier, hip width stance, you bring your shoulders up and back, just like so. And we're gonna go ahead and extend those butterfly wings and then flap them in by hugging yourself. Flap them out, flap them in. It's like hugging the world and then hugging yourself, okay? Now, what if we have shoulder issues? Again, Janelle is gonna show you a gentler expression of this. You can bring your hands down at the side like so, bring your shoulders up and back, palms are facing out, and we just simply rotate from the waist on up. We don't wanna rotate our hips because that could hurt our hips. We're just rotating. Think of like the tether ball playground equipment you have on your elementary or secondary school grounds, playgrounds, just like so. Otherwise, you're going to go ahead and flap those wings in and out and in and out. So this is the deeper expression. If you want even a deeper expression than this, we're going to go ahead and throw a squat into that butterfly. So we end up squatting as we bring our wings in. We come up as we bring the wings out, just like so. We're gonna do 10 of these. So down with the exhale, up with the inhale. Two and up and three and up and four and up. Number five and up. Number six and up. Number seven and up. Number eight, up. We got two more, nine, up and 10. All right, everybody shake out those arms, shake out those legs if you did a little squat like I just did. Now we've warmed up, so it's time to start in earnest with our exercises. 
we're going to have our photographer here, our videographer, come back to the facade of Casa del Mar. And if you know what those words mean, Casa del Mar, the house of the sea, raise your hand if you knew what those words meant in Spanish. And we're going to have Richard go ahead and take a look at the tiles up there at the top, just underneath the rooftop there. It's a little hard to see with the sun. And take a look at the tiles. You'll also want to take a look at those cherubs there. Now, what are cherubs? They are what are known as poor bells. Those are cast plaster made by the Vanderloo family. And the Vanderloos were hired by Julia Morgan, the architect, back here about 100 years ago. And Mr. Hurst loved little cherubs. And you'll notice that they have wings that are above their heads. And you can imagine that they have feet. There's that little leaf that you happen to see at the bottom of their body there. I think of that, imagine those as legs. Now, in between the core bells of the cherubs, you're seeing a tile with what's known as a mythological lion. Taking a look at those blue animals, those four-legged animals, that's a mythological lion. And the cherubs that you see there and the lions are the foundation of our first two exercises. So we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of a cherub core crunch, okay? So think about those cherubs. They had their arms above over their heads, just like so, okay? And their legs straight down, just like so. If you like that stretch, you can just leave it just like that. That's a good core stretch. You're stretching the back there. You're stretching your tummy, okay? And you've got a nice tight rear end, a nice tight tummy as you do so. But if you want that crunch, you're gonna bring your opposite elbow to your opposite knee, just like so. In and out and exhale up. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. We're gonna do about 15 of these. Now, if you have shoulder issues, just simply go ahead and march in place. And Janelle is gonna show you that little march in place like so. What if you have hip issues? Well, bring the arms up and crunch in with the arms like that. So I'm gonna have Janelle show you one of those two regressions or one of those two gentler expressions. And we're gonna go ahead and do 15 of these cherub core crunches. And there's two. I have to do each side to make it a full complete repetition. There's four. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Seven and eight and nine. I say we go for five more after 10. Let's go to 15, 11 and 12 and 13 and 14 and 15. All right, everybody, that may have given you a little bit of a heart rate elevation, respiration rate elevation as well. All right, we're going to come back down to the ground. I see that our mats are gone, however, so we'll bring those mats back out because you might remember the lions that you saw up there in the rooftop. And those lions, of course, are four-legged animals that come down to the ground. So we're going to do the same thing, just like we did with the caterpillars, all right? So you want to get your hip hinge, get that athletic stance, shoulders up and back, hip hinge, come down like so, and you're going to come on down onto the ground, onto all fours. Okay, so lions are kitty cats. So they roar, they meow, and we're gonna have Janelle show you the gentler expression of a mountain lion climber, okay? So you're gonna go ahead and arch your back as I'm showing you here like this. Janelle's doing the same thing. And then you're gonna go ahead and extend your back with your eyes skyward into what's called a cow position. It's called a cat cow. And Janelle's gonna give you sound effects with each one of those. Meow, as you arch your back and you moo. Now, why are we throwing a cow into this? Mr. Hurst liked to call this his ranch. And since the time of his father, when George Hurst, William's father, purchased the original 40,000 acres, Hurst land was always a ranch with cows. So Janelle's gonna show you the cat cow, and I'm gonna show you the lion climber, all right? So we're gonna go for 15. And you're going to either walk in place or run in place. You make it a deeper expression by running in place. I'll show you the deeper expression. Take it away, Janelle. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There it is. Bring it down easy. All right. So depending on the expression, gentle or deep, you're going to have greater or lesser elevation of heart rate and respiration rate. That being said, we're gonna go ahead and come on up. We wanna show you another part of the sumptuous estate known as the Hearst Castle Estate. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our water. And while we do so, we're gonna have you folks out there in 
webinar land, take a little bit of a breather yourself, or simply go ahead and march in place with us. And we want to go ahead and march nice and deep so that we can also increase our bone density. If you want a little heart rate elevation, engage your arms, just like so, okay? And as we come along here, we're gonna have Richard show you the best view of the whole estate. As we pan over to the right, you get a chance to look at Casa Grande and its bell towers. How many of you know that that is the castle? Raise your hand if you know that that is the castle. Looks like a few of you out there know that that's the castle. Now, Mr. Hurst would decorate his castle with many art pieces, both inside the castle, on the castle facade itself, as well as around the grounds here. And as Richard pans over to the right, we get a chance to see a 400 year old statuary piece known as Cupid on a Dolphin. I don't know about you, Janelle, but that's 400 years old. He looks only about that age three. Day above three. He can't be above day, a day above three, absolutely. Now notice what Cupid is doing there. Cupid, of course, is the son of the god Mars and Venus, the god of war and the goddess of love. And he was a very mischievous young boy. He liked to throw or rather shoot arrows and darts into people's hearts, make them fall in love. And that's a really good shoulder exercise, the basis of our next exercise. And I want you to go ahead and pretend you're gonna shoot an arrow into the castle. So as Richard pans back over to the castle, you're gonna go ahead and take the same sort of stance with Cupid. Take a look at that. All right, so there's your target. And as Richard comes back to me, we're gonna put our left foot in front, okay? We're gonna put our left arm in front and put that right hand next to the left hand and you're gonna pull back with that arrow, okay? And imagine you're letting go of that arrow and let go with the right. And now you're gonna step forward with the right leg and with the right hand to bring it up to the left again. Now we step back with the left, pull that left arm back and let go of that arrow. Same idea. So it's a little bit of a hip exercise as well as a shoulder exercise. We'll do about 10 more of these on each side and exhale back, inhale forward. A little balance exercise, as you can see, I was losing that balance a little bit there, that's okay. Just do it as quickly or as slowly as you want. So if you might have hip issues, so if you have hip issues, just pull your arrow back. Just pull your arrow back. If you have shoulder issues, just step back and then step forward, step back, almost like a lunge, okay? So let's do five more on each side, two, two and three. Again, you can go a little faster if you want to make it score with the heart rate elevation. Number four, four and five and five. All right, there it is everybody. Now we're gonna go ahead and have you focus on the bell towers up there. And from now on, I'm gonna show you something special. We want you to become your own little castle. Chanel comes over to my left here. We'll show you that. So your body, I want you to imagine your body as that centerpiece of the castle. And the bell towers that you saw up there, those are your arms, okay? So here's your bell towers. Make sure that you've got your arms nice and parallel with the ground. And what we're gonna do is instead of ringing bells, we're gonna basically be taking the towers and saying goodbye and hello with them, okay? So goodbye and hello, goodbye and hello. Now, if we have shoulder issues, Janelle is gonna show you a gentler expression than playing hello and goodbye with the bell towers. She's gonna to bring her arms back behind and she's going to pull on one wrist, extending your elbows completely and then alternate just like so. And it gets the same muscle groups that you would be using if you were saying hello and goodbye. So we're gonna try about 10 of these. So it's goodbye and hello. You want a deeper expression than this. You can also go into a hip hinge as you say goodbye, then come up. Goodbye and hello. Let's try seven more. Up, six, four, oops, five, four, and three, and two, and one. All right, 
Now, another really spectacular piece of artwork that Mr. Hurst has up here comes from ancient Egypt. And as Richard pans over, you're gonna get a chance to see not only a beautiful Egyptian sculpture, but it's the oldest art piece here on the hilltop. She is known as Sekhmet, S-E-K-H-M-E-T. And she is about somewhere between 3,000 and 3,600 years of age. That's really, really old. She started out in the Nile River, overlooking the Nile River, being the protector of her father, the sun god Ra. And she now has retired here, overlooking the Pacific Ocean and taking care of the sun here at San Simeon and the Hearst Estate. Now, if you'll notice on the far right-hand side, there's a what's called a disc behind her head. This is actually the oldest art piece in the four piece sculpture here, about 3,600 years of age. And that represents the sun god Ra. Now on top of her head, it's a little hard to see what that is, but that's a cobra. And we're gonna talk about the cobra a little bit later, but I just wanted you to take a look at some of the best artwork and oldest artwork here on the hilltop. Some other artwork I'd like to have you take a look at, which represents life and creation are some of the tiles that are embedded here in on the stairwell. Now those tiles also were created by Julia Morgan and fashioned by her craftspeople from the Fayance factory, just like the lion tiles we looked at earlier. And those beautiful lotus blossom flowers are the basis of our next exercise, okay? So kind of like a butterfly, I want you to think just like the lotus flower. You're gonna bring your fern leaves up like so and you're gonna round them just like that. Palms together, round. Now we wanna make sure we've got that athletic stance here. So again, hip shoulder with stance, shoulders up and back, bring the hands together and we come up and around. Lotus flower rounders. And if we have any sort of issues with our shoulders doing this sort of exercise, again, we can do what we did like the Carillon Bell Towers. We can come back behind, grab our wrists and simply do that. And Janelle is gonna show you that gentler expression, okay? Otherwise, bring the palms together, up and around. We're gonna do 10 of these, up and around. There's two. How do we make this a deeper expression? If we come up and around, we go into a squat. Up and around and squat. Up and around and we're halfway there, Janelle. Up and around, squat. Up and around, there's number seven. Up and around, squat, up and around. This is our last one coming up, up and around and squat. All right. Now, if you happen to do the deeper expression, you're probably feeling your elevation of your heart and your respiration rate. Otherwise, you have that nice gentle stretch if you did the gentler expression with Janelle. I mentioned the cobra earlier that we saw that on the head of Sekhmet. And the cobra was somebody who was also very important to Sekhmet because she, the cobra, helped to protect the sun god Ra as well as Sekhmet. And the cobra, the snake here, is the basis of our next exercise. We have mats on the ground because we're gonna come down on the ground and be on our bellies like a snake, okay? So Janelle and I are gonna get that hip width stance, that athletic stance, shoulders up and back. We're gonna hinge at the hips like we did with our caterpillar crawlers, come into a squat like we did with our caterpillar crawlers, arms in front, palms facing each other, okay? And we're gonna crawl on out like a caterpillar, but this time we're gonna stay in our bellies, just like a snake, okay? And what Janelle is gonna show you on her elbows is a gentler version or expression of the cobra. And I'm gonna be on my hand showing you the deeper expression. So a cobra pose comes up like this, almost like a push up, and you've got your hands again close to your chest. Make sure your wrists, elbows, shoulders are all aligned. And what Janelle is doing is basically like a little sphinx pose. And the sphinx, by the way, is also Egyptian. She's just going down with an inhale, up with an exhale, okay? And if you prefer to go even gentler than that, you can just simply go ahead and hold the pose like this and just stay right there. Otherwise, cobra pose, deeper expression with me or the gentler expression with Janelle. And we're gonna do 10 more of these for somewhere between 12 and 15. Now you want even more of a deeper expression, come up with the cobra and then go into a downward dog. Back down, and easy. And Mr. Hurst loved dogs, by the way, his favorite breed was a dachshund. So it's appropriate that we're doing a cobra into a downward dog. 
think of yourself as a little duck some there if you're gonna do a downward dog. We'll do five more of these regular cobras with deep expression. Four and three and two. And number one, there it is. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pop on up nice and easy. And we're gonna get a chance to look at some gold here next. Mr. Hurst being very wealthy, if he could afford gold, he had it, by golly. Gilded gold, gold leaf. Gold leaf is something that's very, very thin, tissue paper thin. And you're gonna see that here in a moment as we take a walk over to some of the gilded gold of the castle and of Casa Grande. And as we walk along, we're gonna go ahead and wanna grab our water bottle. So I'm gonna grab mine over here. Rich is gonna show you some beautiful views there once again of the front side of the castle. And we're just gonna simply march along. March along here. Believe it or not, the castle is about 69,000 square feet. There are 38 bedrooms, there are 42 bathrooms, 30 fireplaces, and enough room in there where Mr. Hurst would invite anywhere from 20 to 50 guests on any given weekend. Now, you might be saying to yourself, 69,000 square feet, what does that mean? Well, for those of you that know football and like to play football, American football, that is, the American football field is about 48,000 square feet. So if you think about that, the castle at 69,000 square feet is about a foot field, football field and a half of square footage of a football field. So one and a half football fields is what I'm trying to say. We're gonna walk up the stairs here and get a chance to look at the south side, southwestern side of Casa Grande and the castle. And if you look upwards there, you'll get a chance to see some of that 24 karat gold leaf, real gold that Mr. Hurst had Julia Morgan's craftsman paint onto that coat of arms that you see up there. Now inside that coat of arms, you see two castles and you see two lions. I want you to focus there on the lions. They are called rampant lions. And you'll notice, unlike the lion climbers that we just did on the ground horizontally, these lions are actually climbing vertically. And that's the foundation of our next exercise. We're gonna do what's called a rampant vertical lion. And we're gonna get very rampant with our speed here too. So when we do the rampant vertical lion, we raise one arm up in the air on the opposite leg. Okay, so front paw and back paw. And then we just alternate, just like so. And you can roar if you want, Janelle. Roar! <laughs> that's right. Okay, and now what if you have any shoulder issues, you can't bring your front paws above your head? Well, you can just simply use your back paws and climb. What if your hips hurt? Well, you can go ahead and use your front paws only, front paws. And Janelle is gonna show you one of those two gentler expressions as we continue with 15 different rampant lions. Two and three and four, roar if you want, five and six and seven and eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 and 15. Like the chair of core crunches, it gets the core, it gets stability and it gets the heart rate up. Well, that being said, everybody, we're getting close to the end of Parks PE. What does that mean? Cool down time. And we get a chance to take a look at a cast stone sculpture that was created here about a hundred years ago for the basis of that cool down. So we're gonna take a little walk along the south side of the castle here. And as we do so, Rich is gonna show you some more of the beautiful artwork like this several hundred year old wellhead that we are looking at that you're looking at out there in webinar land. How about that? You're also getting a chance to see some of that 20 to 25 acres of gardens that Mr. Hurst planted up here, very colorful. And Julia Morgan, of course, very instrumental in helping to create those gardens and the placement of the artwork that you happen to see. We continue along the south side here. Here we have some citrus. Mr. Hurst loved the citrus. 
It had a very Spanish flavor for him. He tried to create what we call a Spanish Italian Renaissance type village up here. He wanted this to really be its own little city in San Simeon, California, this first castle property. And as we come on over here to probably the sunniest side of what's called the South Wing of Casa Grande, here you get the chance to see the basis of our next exercise. This is Ofrande au Soleil. And I do not speak French, so I apologize for uh, mispronouncing what she is. But she is a cast plaster sculpture that was created about 100 years ago. And Mr. Hurst promptly figured her, her right in the sun because she's making offerings to the sun. That's what that means, Ofrande au Soleil, to offer to the sun. So what Janelle and I are going to do is we're gonna go ahead and get on that mat again. A lot of exercises today on the mat. Athletic stance, we're coming to a hip hinge. We're gonna come down into a squat and the arms out in front, like just like Janelle is doing. And we're just gonna simply crawl on out on all fours, okay? Now we stay right here because some of us might have back problems or issues uh, with our shoulders. We're just gonna simply sit down on one hip, left hip or right hip, and then we're gonna swing our legs around, okay? And so what Janelle and I are gonna do is try our best to look like a fronde au soleil. Bring the shoulders up and back, okay? We're bending the knees. Those toes are pointed straight up towards the sky. And we're gonna come on in and make our own offerings by pushing those palms out, facing each other, the hands out, and eyes to the sky, offering to the sun. If you want to, palms upwards and you get a little bit of a more shoulder activation doing that. What if this is too much for you? Well, you can just simply go ahead Keep your shoulders back, okay? You want to lay down the legs flat, just like so. You just simply pull your shoulders up and back, okay? Otherwise, we go back into that afonde au soleil and we bring those arms out. It stretches the back here, what's called the latissimus dorsi muscles. And we're stretching also our calves and our hamstrings here. And the neck as we look up towards the sky. If you want to, you can even straighten out those legs and do something like this. You get your lower back engaged with a little flexion, just like so. If you want more, a deeper expression, Janelle's gonna show you the regular expression of Offrande Asaleo. But if you want a deeper expression, this would be a deeper expression that I'm showing you. Or cross one leg over the other, take the opposite elbow onto the outside of the knee and then rotate. Pretend you're squeezing a sponge and this gets the whole body stretched. Really good cool down. And then you switch it out after about four or five seconds. Do the same thing. Bring the hand behind, just like so. And you do that a couple more times. All right, so stay with the pose, whichever pose you're choosing. Janelle's gentler expression, or the one that I'm showing you here with the rotation. Okay, deep breathing. That's what it's all about. Bring that heart rate down elevation, a de-elevate rather, that heart rate as well as the respiration rate. Okay, and when you feel good, Bring those shoulders up and back. Let's hop it on up. And guess what, everybody? We started at San Simeon Harbor today, and we're gonna go ahead and say goodbye to you from the South Wing here. On behalf of California State Parks and Hearst Castle, Janelle and I behind me here, are gonna say goodbye to you and look forward to another edition of Parks PE with you on another day. In the meantime, Rich is gonna show you a goodbye shot of those gardens with the San Simeon Harbor Point that you saw earlier today. Bye everybody. Bye.